Okay, it's on my board, so one. Um, so, I guess, do, do you want a Pong there and you, you create a, a request spec? Uh, are we still on that? Or? Well, we, we could, I think we, we, we could certainly leave that and alternatively you know, create just a, um, an issue for, you know, as a to-do thing uh -huh. for the request spec. Um, just looking at the other pull requests and statuses thereof. Uh, I guess if we're the th this is this is the one that we were just that we that we fixed the the merged conflicts on, and You're this. Interested in looking at what Mary and I did yesterday, right? It's kind of trivial. Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I think we've we've got you know like a chunk of like forty minutes now in into which only uh, you know we we could that uh, yeah. I I think I am interested in it. Um, you know, Nick is talking about the whole approach to yeah, as is Marcelo and so on. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Say again. You're not interested in looking at it. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah that that would be. I guess I guess in my usual verbosity, I was kind of the 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 only thing that gives me pause for thought is about you know the the extent, the extent to which you know refactoring towards this kind of thing, you know the. You know the sort of short-term benefits for users, and then you know, I guess the whole looking at this is the hope that we will end up with a whole, with a much more maintainable JavaScript system in which we can produce a much nicer interface as well. Um, well, this is just the Marion and I exploring different things, but yeah. uh, I guess yeah. If you want to tell me about it, I'm a kind of there is. You know the kind of things that we could fit into the next forty minutes. Um, you know, include having a look at this and seeing what's going on. And I'm not sure whether it would actually fill that whole time. Probably not. But um, it, took, it took quite a while to get it all. Oh yeah. Together. Mm, mm. That's fairly right. Did, did you like? Um, Follow you were following some particular guide to uh, a mix of different things, a mixture of things like just different tutorials. And... Um, so basically, if you do gulp, mm -hmm. npm install gulp, presumably, just do npm install, but yeah, oh. Yeah, do the whole thing. Yeah. That might take a minute or two. Um, yeah. So we actually didn't quite get to building the hang person. No, sure. Um, we just did... Uh, basically, if you go... I'm sure if I didn't like entirely open the thing. I expected. I, Let's wait to install and then... Yeah. Insensitive. The... Um, Sometimes that if I ended up with two hang persons there, untitled hang person. No, only one. I also found uh, the UK is now letting us download directly the ch their charity database, uh -huh. which is uh, uh, okay. Okay. So you've got some karma testing in there. I uh, yeah. With uh, chai and stuff. Mm -hmm. Go back. Is that done yet? Come on. No. no. I don't wow. think so. Uh, uh, so the build here that, so that we're doesn't go. We're using Browserify to build uh -huh. what's called a bundle. Okay. 
and it does some stuff like you know how in an npm you can use require mm -hmm. well browserify kind of lets you do that uh like in the front end okay so if you go into index.js for instance yeah like you see there require mm -hmm. uh that's browserify okay so when we when we when everything installs, mm -hmm. what you can do is run gulp watch or gulp build. Okay. And what it will do is it will build all those things. It'll like go through the the source files uh -huh. and it will uh put them into a bundle. Okay. Called uh build.js. Mm-hmm. Which I've then placed into index.html. Right. So after you run it for the first time, build, after you run gulp build or whatever, gulp mm -hmm. watch, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to open that HTML file mm -hmm. and it'll display the trivial thing that it does. Right, which is the, the, the sliding operation. Uh, so is it installed yet? Uh yes, so gulp build. Um, I guess I need to do npm install minus g gulp npm command line option. Okay. So then, if you go to, is it finished? Oh, then now is it now running a server at a certain? No, it's, uh, it's totally not running a server because we didn't do that yet. We no, no, didn't no. That stuff up. Uh, there's a, it, it's, it's it's finished, Bill. But it, I mean, it, am I? It's it, it kind of just stuck. It's going to stay there forever. I'm not sure. Can I just control? Well, if I just go here, I do open build in. Like the the way to do it with development is usually open is gulp gulp watch and then it'll watch your whether you change your source files and rebuild them okay so i can kill that and do gulp watch for that and then it'll just stay there and i think there's something there's like something called live reload that'll also okay. anyway anyway but so now i have i'm here so it's Loading uh, this build.js thing. Mm -hmm. And if we look at build.js, that's all not really, not supposed to be comprehensible by us, but that, that's, that's the entire bundle oh. of everything pulled together from, so if we start from index.js, it's pulling in React, React DOM, the slider JX. So this is creation of an individual. React component. Current component. Using the new ES6 class syntax. Okay. Uh, which I don't fully understand all the details of. But, okay. Uh, and so this, this return, like... It then also uses another class called gold tagline. Which basically has that text. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. Inside of it, and so it sort of, it, you know, the slider is bound to the tagline, right? So then the idea is that uh, well, the idea I think with React is that now that you have this class slider, right? Right. If you had like a full pipeline set up, like in your Rails app or whatever, mm -hmm. you could just put that like anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like declarative JavaScript that can kind of just be popped in like it's a widget of component. Right, right, right. Like you can create reusable JavaScript basically instead of like. Yeah, in, in, well, I guess instead of like ha hanging a particular. Manipulating, manipulating the DOM as much, I guess. Well, or like rather than there being an existing HTML component and you're saying, right, I want to add some functionality with some JavaScript to it. It's tightly bound to that. Yeah. 
and everything. You've got, you've got like this is my component, yeah, which consists of that. some JavaScript yeah. functionality and and a structure. And React so, is the DOM side. Yeah, right. But so, in terms of this index, basically the the React is choosing now, to display mounting into that app because you need something to mount the whole. Right. And where's the binding? Like this is this a um, React knows to use app automatically, or we've got yeah. some specification index JS. Oh no, here. Okay. So our top level thing is saying. Right. If we've got that app thing, then what we're going to do is create one of our uh, slider elements, and that will appear there. And so the slider will then uh, consist of right. And then there's kind of a nested component in here. In that, so the tagline time, is something else that you every time you change it, it'll determine whether it needs to re-render, and then it'll it'll re-render with a new tagline. Right. You mean every time that you uh, might like, make a change here? Like, that's why it's updating, yeah. Sure, right. Now, there's more involved right. like, with the theory of how to actually do this, like, properly or whatever. Yeah. From, from perspective, like, there's Flux and all this other crazy stuff, but... Right. But, yeah, uh, so we've got to check... I mean, we specify that... We, we've linked in to say that this is the... We're going to adjust the state based on this and then yeah at each each occasion i guess that there's a there's a change then potentially the whole thing gets reinterpreted and then you can look at our test which was just really simple yeah basically it checks that shallow it's like it doesn't really render into the proper dom i don't know it makes it faster or whatever mm -hmm. Um, expects that when you render a slider component that it will right off the bat contain a tagline with 10 gold pieces. As a default, sure. And then there was some more work to try and get something like an acceptance test to where mm -hmm. when you change the slider then the tagline updates appropriately. Mm -hmm. But it was like 8.30 last night when we sure. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff with setting up karma and all that stuff, but yeah, yeah. And like, because like apparently everything in the node world changes like every two months. Yes. They're like, oh, don't do this anymore. Or this yeah, is yeah. So it took a while to figure out. Yes. Uh, because there's just there's this thing with node like when you search on Google mm -hmm. like all these blog posts come up related to your topic but they're all out of date right so it's kind of frustrating yes I mean I, I've spent some time doing node and angular and other bits and pieces of development and yes and being frustrated uh, by similar sorts of issues and yes it's what one of the things that gives me uh, pause for thought in terms of uh, jumping onto that stack. But it's supposed to be the future, so... Well, absolutely. You know, and I don't want to argue with the future. Um, well, that's interesting. So this is... the. It seems like we're getting some kind of... Uh, Let's do the specific test, shall we? There seems to be... Is that another... It can't find the text box repeats. We're getting a failure here for... Um, an edit future event. Feature. On... Um, oh. That work locally, which works fine locally. Uh, well, I wonder if that's another to add to our list of things that are intermittent failures. Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing about you know, the, it, like as I say, that the whole all of these this JavaScript is, is the future, and, and maybe we'd have a lot more people excited to get involved 
with Agile Ventures and Agile Ventures projects if there was a lot more of this sort of, dare I say it, cutting edge stuff going on. I mean, I, I, I guess what, in, in some ways, we should be kind of anticipating, you know, what are the parts of the system that need to be changing soon to best support our long-term goals? And, you know, wh where the ma major change, you know, different parts of the system are, to a certain extent, more or less likely to experience change. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've also been I've been reading the the re reviews of JavaScript in this, um, you know, single application, you know, single page web, applica web web applications, and the interesting thing that they're they're the approach that they're doing there, and was Nick saying that that was what all Ember is doing? Is that it's all about these kind of anonymous self-calling functions, so you know uh, that that return, you know that you, you end up passing in jQuery. J, jQuery so that it has you know reference to it, and you you're actually so you're setting bar uh, I don't know let's call it like what well, was SPA weren't they doing like this? So they're doing like this, and then. You've got a, the, the the key bit is that you're returning the you know the elements that you need like so and then it's sort of defining what would it be like woot equals function uh, do awesome stuff or whatever like like that yeah and. Which is an interesting model. I guess this is kind of it's this is defining um, effectively constructor functions. Um, you know, in order to create this, um, uh, in order to create. Oh, in order to create. The relevant objects, yeah. and then, but so the, the 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 pattern that I'm used to is having have something like this is our my element or what it is. Let's call it a I don't know. It's like a pebble, and then you know we can declare prototypes. We can I mean we we can ha we get private we can have private variables and things. There, it feels like the syntax is somewhat simpler. The, 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 the self calling aspect of it, I guess it's about what I guess what this corresponds to is it's the equivalent of a factory, almost a factory method. I mean, that, you, that you've then you know that you only call it once, and there's only one instance of this in the, in the system. I guess that's what it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, yeah. So I mean, which I mean, it brings us back to the whole, you know, setup that we've got here for uh, JavaScript, and we've got our different defining those functions versus. So on define a different branch now, and we've got our JavaScript versus yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, I I am I am reminded. I, I was just I'm just seeing here actually some of our users uh, in the. ESAS 169 MOOC channel saying uh, that he, I had so far done at least four different events and all was a no show. Oh. 
And I wonder, I mean, and that may all just be that that is the case, but it reminds me of this other issue that we have, which we could just start investigating in the time remaining to us, which is Yes, we've got that in progress now. Uh, it's to do with the things going live. So indicate if there's a, so we've got now what are the so we've got here indicate. So there was one. There was a confusion about the. There's something else. Adjusting what's shown on the event page when event is live. There's, there's, we had another issue. I've got here. Yeah, of Scrum starting at the wrong times. Yeah. Uh, uh, Is that mm, okay? Yeah, I just add the word live in there so I can find it next time. I'll join. Oh, I have got the word live in there, but that didn't show up in there. Oh, let's just put it in the title um, event live display, um, which I think. This is the, this is on that we were talking about in the kickoff, that that we were thinking might be potentially quite simple to do is, effectively we want to hide, starting a hangout on air. Oh, yeah. Is is that something sensible to look at? Next. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel this is uh that's a kind of serious usability issue. Um. So we've got this, I guess what would be good to look at here, it's, a, it's the event show page. So app views, events show. So we've got this. These different elements. We've got this, the Hangout is now live. We've got a whole lot of things of, of like, that if the event is live, you can edit the link form and so on and so on. Um, where does the button go? So we've got the button so that's the Hangout button there. So so effectively, it would involve hiding this. That's the thing, isn't it? It's interesting. Like, you actually have to be signed in to even see the Hangout button. OK. And then the thing that controls whether the Hangout Live is displayed or not is this question about event instance, we ask if the event instance is live. Okay. Right, and so it's got this, this thing here. It, has it started? Is it not explicitly set to be finished? And then updated at is greater than two minutes ago. Right. And up. 
I guess what I'm not clear about is that uh, I guess I guess that the um, the 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 Hangout plugin is kind of repeatedly hitting the it's kind of repeatedly hitting our server. Yeah. Presumably partly in order to tell it when it's finished. Probably. Or. Oh, we've got to look, there's, a, there's a live scope there, which used like five minutes ago. I guess the hangout that we're in now, it doesn't have like an associated an event, does it? Because it, it just, we created the hangout as a one-off. Uh-huh. I guess, can we even see that? No, no, I guess that shouldn't matter. If I inspect our current hangout, can we see from the network? Do we have a ticket in for... Uh... Some of the move the pairings being in um, Slack instead of the Gitter. Uh, I don't know. I certainly have a concern about it. Okay. Uh, so Scrum started at uh, yeah. We do. That's this one. And my superficial thought was, can we make the, like when people create a new event, if we just make CS169 the default project setting, mm -hmm. assuming that I'm diagnosing the problem correctly, then that. Um, I thought it was the, wow. No, I, well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, you mean if they go in on their own? And... Yeah, because I, I assume that that's why we're getting some, you know, People because like the, cause some people will just go and click new event and then and not bother with the project setting at all, um, and we can maybe confirm that by um, uh, confirm that by by looking at try, trying to search for someone look at the up those event details and see what project they're associated with, um, but. Uh, yeah, e e since the since the majority of people creating pairing events are in this project, it would it would it would make sense to just do that. Okay, um, I'm gonna look up like one of these example ones and see what. Okay. It... That's a great idea. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just filtering the network data from our current hangout to see if it goes to look at for YouTube. Well, I will see. Like it's it's sending live stacks back back to YouTube because I, I guess we're streaming. Uh, I'm not seeing anything go to Azure. Maybe uh, is it going to website one? Website uh, one. Yes, it is sending. Okay, so uh, yeah, according to my to the Hangout is sending. But it just sent a couple. I mean, the thing is that is like if I close the hangout, right? Uh -huh. Then there's no guarantee that the hangouts, that the that the plugin is going to be able to talk to the uh, our, our server and go on. What is the tagline in the Slack coming from? What is the tagline in the Slack coming from? I assume it's it, 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 Mark one colon Ruby intro pair with German. I can't see your screen. I, I, that's coming from the event title, which is coming through the Agile bot. Oh, the title. Okay, that's what it's called. The title. It's not a name. It's a title. Why did that break? Oh. I think you need double... Double quotes? No. no. Column of events title does not exist. But I think it is. If it's not title, it's almost certainly name. Well, the name wasn't finding it either. But 
Uh, I mean, you could have like a very minor spelling mistake or a difference in the. I don't know. I mean, uh, if you've got the, like the, I mean, presumably you're working from some Slack. Yeah, yeah. You, you're like you were looking in in general, right? And then and you were seeing. Yeah. I was also going to say, let's say, like, oh yeah, pepper going on number one. I mean, you can see that the user's name there is g dot a, and you could be find the user and then find the associate their their events. Might be an easier way to um, access that. Uh, okay, I guess. I mean, that's a Slack user. What are they actually on? The well, website? that that bot there. Oh, uh, I'm now. Where where does that username actually come from? It's actually. I think it might conceivably be their G plus username. No. Uh, I don't know. I think that, no. If you're defined by you need you need name. You know, like like colon or whatever. I. I I don't know if it's it's cool. We probably don't have name on, on a user. The schema. User, where's the user? I've got users, email. Is it like login or this? Mm. Uh. Would it be YouTube username? YouTube username? No. Mm. I mean, I guess actually the thing to do there in some ways would be to look at the would be to look at the Agile bot and work out. What? Yeah, anyway. So there we go. What does it do? So this is for a pairing event. How does it make the... So you've got send Slack message. And then send Slack message. Username. It does, it does user dot name. From channel message user, and then we've got a user. Got user is equal to name request body dot host name. And I guess so. That's um. That must be incoming from website one from the the agile bot. See, so is it is that in actually in the Slack? Service hits the agile bot. So host name we do hangout dot user dot display name. So you could try and search the um, if you go back to the, the tr yeah uh, yeah just, just, like that thing you're doing there and do display underscore name. I didn't actually see that in the um. It's not a it's not an attribute. Oh right, that's weird. How do we have? Oh, oh this okay. Uh, maybe they're not even hooked up. So we've got display name. Huh. Well, see, we've got, we, we can get a display, which is either the full name, email designator, or anonymous. Where is this at? So look, look at my, if you look at my screen, this is like wow. line 85 in, in user.rb. Like there's a, I mean, actually looking at that thing, that looks like they've may, we've maybe taken their email and I don't know, like, where are they? Where are those things coming from? Because the the event instance has a user associated with it. Belongs to user, which is our standard kind of user. Right. I mean, you you could do like a little. Obviously, doesn't have the blank in it, so it's obviously the email designator. 
Well, but what does Squish do there? Does Squish, what? I was just looking at Squish and wondering. Oh, if squish do. removes. Yeah. So I mean, what you could be doing is is like. Um, <sighs> yeah, and we. I guess we've got it. But I think you're right. Like, like when I do, what does it do? When, when I start a hangout, it and well, it ends up doing Sam Space Joseph. Uh, and I guess some people have, have not, I mean, actually the thing to do is rather than using that, it may actually be easier uh -huh. to find the person. If we looked at the members lists, um, in the system and if we search members for, what was that? It was pin chip. There we go. So. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it's that it, right. So the person doesn't have. So presumably, this is the beginning of their email address. Really, I, I, I would I would assume so. Yeah, and in fact, it is here. So this is their email address. So you could try and do a find by email on this person. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I found that. Okay, so then you could find his event instances. But and I guess the event instances would in, would inherit. You can like map their associated project, I guess. I think it might need to be in a block rather than a. Uh, he created his own project ID. Did he? Yes. Right, 70. He's actually created it, right, a, a, a project of a home at one review and trip here with German. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and who, what were other examples of people? Um, so, I'm not looking at those episode one. I'm going to look at general. Uh, so, other people. Fun stance. There's. Jose Al Zevalos. Uh, who? I mean, I just put the, and I can search the members directory. Yeah. Oh, slow pages, slow pages, slow pages. Right. So there's this person. There's a person called Christopher. Olivia. I guess I guess what I should be doing is taking notes of these people and putting them into the ticket. So uh, this guy's second project ID was just A V setup scripts, which Right. I That's the current default, yeah. So, so the German guy created his own project, and this other guy, right, just defaulted. I guess he didn't follow the link again out of the course, but you know. right. Uh, coming into the general channel.
I mean, it, interesting. Did you have a link from the assignment to the... Yeah, yeah, there is. But I think it's still, you know, it kind of says, you know, uh, in the pair programming component, uh -huh. like in pair programming air, you know, it kind of says, like this description says like create one, you know, create one here. And then the, the, the I mean, kind of, I mean, it does say here, like, yeah. It's got it's got this, but it's um you know it says leave the category as a default this, but I mean it, it clearly it it would make sense for the default to like if the majority of people are doing it with CS one six nine we would clearly remove some of the issues from you yeah. know and and people who start creating their own projects we can reach out to them individually and say oh okay now look. The project is that's for, you know, a bigger scale thing. Can you keep yours as a CS one six nine project? Uh huh. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's kind of a visibility issue here, in as much as I mean, it would almost be, I think, better if people were creating their hangouts from the Gitter. Uh huh. You know what I mean? If we if we could say you know, you know, credit, yeah, because then that forces them into a kind of, anyway, separate, separate thing. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. So, well, it's kind of time for a stand up to which we will see if anybody, apart from you and I attend, but I guess, uh, on the off chance, I'll play another hangout. Okay.